What's up everyone? I have a couple of rifle suppressors and after I'm done shooting with them, I have to wait a while for them to cool down to pack up my stuff so I can go home. Also, I use the key mount system. The suppressors are put on the muzzle device cold, then as they get hot, the materials expand a bit and they kind of lock themselves on. I have to wait until they cool to remove them and swap them to another rifle if I want to shoot the same suppressor on multiple rifles in a range trip. Extremely first world problems here, I know, but a source of annoyance for me. I looked for a barrel or suppressor cooling fan. They seem to be used for precision shooting applications. I saw a couple on Amazon for 60 bucks. I was hoping I could make my own for a bit cheaper. Uh, here's what I came up with. Let's get into it. I ordered an air mattress inflation pump from Amazon. It has an internal 4,000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. This thing actually moves a decent amount of air. It was 22 bucks. I then designed and 3D printed this nozzle and some chamber adapters. Uh, they are connected by some 5 sixteenths ID vacuum line from a local auto parts store that cost a couple bucks. All said and done, uh, got about $25 into it. I made these chamber adapters for 556, 308, and 762 by 39, the three calibers I run through my two different rifle suppressors. I, of course, wanted to do some testing to get an idea of how much quicker I could cool my suppressor, and I didn't have time to go to the range, so I did it at home. I put my suppressor in the oven at 500 Fahrenheit for 15 or 20 minutes to let the temperature stabilize. I took it out and put it on the rifle. I measured the temperature with an IR temp gun in a specific and repeatable place on the suppressor body. It immediately starts cooling down once removed from the oven and from being handled, so to get a repeatable starting temp, I would just wait until it read about 400 Fahrenheit. Then started a 10 minute timer and recorded the temp at the end of that 10 minutes, measuring it in the same spot on the suppressor body. I did this test with and without the barrel cooling system. The barrel cooling system cools off the suppressor about 1.5 times faster than without it at an ambient temperature of 67 degrees, which you can see on my little thermometer behind the setup. The final temperature after 10 minutes was 200 Fahrenheit without the cooling system and 100 Fahrenheit with it. Of course, the cooling rate will vary widely based on the ambient temperature. There are two reasons why I don't put, you know, the hose or some sort of adapter in the end of the suppressor. One, it would melt my hose adapter. This PETG starts getting bendy around 200 Fahrenheit. The chamber will be hot, obviously, but not as hot as the suppressor. The barrel material is usually much more thermally conductive than suppressor material, so it will heat up and cool off quicker. If the chamber is really hot, I would just kind of blow some air in there first, holding the adapter like this for 30 seconds to a minute. Two, I think the cooling will be more efficient based on the directionality of the suppressor baffles. If air blows in this way, I think it might be likely to kind of just pass through relatively unimpeded. If air is blown in from the chamber end, like how gases are designed to flow through it behind the bullet, the air will get trapped in the baffles and swirl around, increasing the surface area exposed to turbulence and that convective cooling. Anyways, I'm pleased with my little setup and its performance. After 10 minutes of continuous use, the battery indicator still said fully charged, so I can probably run this multiple times in a range trip. It also has a USB port to charge my phone or whatever if I need to while I'm out there. I will post the 3D parts files to my GrabCAD if you want to build your own and you have access to a 3D printer. Link to my GrabCAD is in the description on the parts file page and in the description of this video, I will link to this specific blower I bought from Amazon as well as a note about what tubing to buy. This blower does come with some nozzles that you could probably just attach your hose directly to, but they move significantly less air kind of because of the design of this blocking the flow straight forward. Honestly, you could you could probably just attach a tube to this and then stick the other end of the tube in your chamber and it would work fine. Anyways, just wanted to share this little project. Let me know how it works out if you make one for yourself. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.